Alright, welcome back, and to all you lazy people who just skipped straight to this, this is going to be the um, the case recap from all the five videos that should have gone up before this of the Judgment of the Light case that we've just cracked on behalf of um, Collectibles Emporium on Amazon. Um, I do have to keep shouting that out, and it, the link will be in the description below to the website. Um, but otherwise, I think we're just going to get into this video, because I, I, I shouldn't do a loads of promotion, because you're just here to see what, what got pulled. I'm going to go upwards in order of rarity from Super to... Ultra Ulti and then Secrets and Ghosts, and you'll really see the difference in distribution between the boxes because as we were going through it, for those of you who haven't watched it, the distribution was incredibly different compared to what we've had before. The boxes are no longer guaranteed the same way, so I definitely recommend watching the boxes if you're considering investing in this set because it might surprise you. So to start things off, we're going to start with the Xyzes and the Supers. We've got five copies of number 66, Master Key Beetle. Uh, five copies, I believe, of Umbral Horror Masquerade. So, the key beat was good, but the Masquerade not so good. Another five copies of Starlish Lord Galaxion. Four copies of Herald of Pure Light. And then three copies of the cover card, Utopia Ray Victory. Then for the Synchros, we got a ridiculous amount of HTC uh, Psyhemoths in five. And I think we still got the same amount of Conqueroders as well, so those were definitely the easy to get Synchros. Um, we only managed to get three three copies of Clausulus, but I think it's a better card, so it's alright to at least get some of it. It's worth a wee bit more than the, the multiples we got the others. We only got three copies of Galaxy Serpent, thankfully, because it's awful to pull, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, you pulled them all, so I think you lost at the box tally. Um, only three copies of Bajingi Quillin, but... I pulled the Ghost Ride. It's, it's, com it's a complete deck, I guess. We managed to get the whole deck out of the kit, out of the, um, the case. Um, three copies of Fire King Avatar Yaksha, and then four copies of Princess of the Cherry Blossoms, but it's it's a bit of a mediocre card. Um, four copies of Fire Formation Yoko, which I actually really like, so I think that's a, a good amount. And then four copies of Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare. So that was the supers. Um, for the ultras, we managed to get a full playset of Bujinte Susanawu, so definitely well on the way to a, a Bujin deck. Uh, also, we got three copies of Bujin Yamato, so anyone who wants to build a deck may as well buy this case. <laughs> um, three copies of Mask Chameleon, which is, for me, easily one of the better cards in the set. I really like this card. Um, one, only one copy of Cockadoodle Doo, which is actually a card that we thought was really good. So, this is going to be quite expensive, so I definitely recommend get, investing in this if it's going to be as short printed as it was for us. Um, we sadly got four copies of um, Mecha Fighter Beast Aero Squin. So I was looking at this Impala, that's what I thought it was for. Three copies of Aero Squin and two copies of Impala, which weren't the best cards, but... Can't even count! Kind of glad they were in small quantities, and one Coach Captain Bear, Bear Man, so kind of glad that was in a low number. We then got um, four copies of Rank Up Magic Numeron's Force, three copies of Xyz Encore, all of which were towards the end, actually, mm. and then sadly just two copies of Shape Sister, which is actually a really good uh, sleeper ultra. I put both of those, too. Yeah, you did, didn't you? So that was the ultras. Um, the ultis, we only actually got six Ultima Rares across the case across the course of the whole case. We got one Susanawu, one Utopia Ray Victory, one Umbral Horror Masquerade, one Star Eater, and two Numero and Numero Force. So it's alright, but realizing how much you get shorted is quite something. Then for the secrets and the ghost, we managed to only get one copy of Star Eater and Ghost Rare, so it's really nice, but maybe more copies of the ghost would be nice, but at least we got the one. Uh, we then got three copies of World of Prophecy, which is kind of, we've realised, kind of like the bad secret of the set, surprisingly, even though it's a prophecy card. We then got um, one copy of Noble Knight Dresden, one copy of Armadies, Keeper of Boundaries, one Star Eater, four Transmodify, two Coach Soldier Wolfbuck, and finally one Brother to the Fire Fist Rooster. Um, overall in review, it kind of probably would have been nicer to get at least one more Rooster, but I feel that the, the case was still pretty good value for the money that was paid for it. But the only real concern now is going into... Uh, after seeing how the boxes were distributed, with some being incredibly good and some being incredibly incredibly bad, it really brings into question how good an investment single boxes are. Like, a case is, was really good because you can guarantee that the money will be made back on what was spent on this. But on single boxes, you could pull so bad or you could pull so well, the investment is a lot more risky. So yeah, either way guys, that's been a recap on the case opening for Judgment of the Light. I hope you've enjoyed and I hope everything's been in shot across the course of the thing because I haven't been able to see the camera. But 
otherwise, yeah, final plug, uh, check out Collectibles Emporium down in the link below um, for, all your ba for all your basic Yu-Gi-Oh needs. Um, and <laughs> it's the standard <laughs> slogan, the standard slogan. And I'll see you guys next time with some more Yu-Gi-Oh related content. Peace out. Bye.